Good morning and welcome to a short introduction of the new Tenere 700 World Raid. So before I start with the introduction or with the technical details, the differences uh, to the standard Tenere 700, I want to add a quick disclaimer. Um, as you might know, I am an actual owner of a Tenere 700 and I just reached uh, 50,000 kilometers with my Tenere 700. So I have a lot of experience with the bike, with the platform and uh, I'm certainly not the worst person to talk about my experiences with this uh, new edition of the Tenere 700 which is called the World Raid. Uh, however, just to let you know, my personal Tenere 700 has a lot of equipment on it, so it's much heavier, it has the Explorer Pack, it has also other equipment. Um, the Explorer Pack actually adds a lot of weight, I don't know how much exactly, but uh, in the style that I was touring with it, uh, certainly it was uh, more than 240 kilograms, certainly with all the luggage. And yeah, if you're getting on a bike like this, which is uh, just uh, stock without any accessories, um, it feels like you're on a race bike actually, or yeah, on an MT-07, even though this one here weighs uh, 220 kilograms, fully fueled. But you know, this is a, all the differences is a topic for later. I will just now look for a nice place to show you the bike and give you a little tour of what they changed for this uh, World Ride edition, so you can really see all the differences. Now, let's take a look at the bike. Uh, as you can see, I'll, <laughs> I'll take my smartphone to help because it just has the nicer video. Um, you see, there's... Let's start with the obvious differences, right? So the obvious difference is the new fuel tank, which uh, has a bigger capacity of 23 liters instead of 16 or 15, um, if you're realistic with the standard version. And you see, the bike itself is a bit wider in the tank area, but they also increase the size of the cooler, which is also nice, of the radiator, sorry. Um, you see, the, the tank is also lower now, because usually the tank goes about this height here. Uh, let's see, this height. And you have two fuel caps, of course. But the important thing is really, they have now two tanks, uh, if you go down, you see it goes all the way down and this is re really nice because it keeps the weight distribution down. Uh, so balance is the keyword with the Tenere 700, of course, and this didn't change for this version. You see there's also protection added to... Uh, this protection here is added to um, protect the fuel tank, of course. Um, yeah, in total, here you see that uh, the, the silhouette is a bit lower now, which is also beneficial to the ergonomy because you have now the possibility to have this a bit wider and flatter seat. Uh, you see it's in this area, it's a bit wider, which makes it more comfortable. It's also a bit wider, uh, a bit flatter, and you can actually, you have more space to roam around to sit, which is a nice thing. And I feel like the ergonomy in total is a bit better. Let's go to the fuel caps. I mean, you have two fuel caps because you have two tanks. Of course, there's uh, some kind of leveling in the to to keep the weight distribution equal. But you have these two tanks to fill it up. I mean, might be a disadvantage, but it's the way to ha they had to do it, of course. 
and you really need to use the key on both which is uh, comprehensible in the way that they didn't want to have a uh, you know smart key feature because otherwise that would just add to the electronic complexity and make the bike maybe you know include another pitfall that you don't want actually Let's go a bit further in the front. You see here that steering damper from Olin's, which is new, which w should really help if you're riding it hard, uh, no matter if off-road or, uh, let's say, on the highway, where the front wheel could be a little bit lighter if you add uh, more weight for luggage and stuff. And you can easily adjust it here uh, to make it stiffer or less stiff. Yeah, that's a nice feature. Also, you know, the forks, they were changed. That's now a premium Kayaba fork, uh, KYB Kayaba. And it has more adjustability. It has 20 millimeters more travel. Um, yeah, and yes, it's a great addition, I have to say. Uh, it feels nice. And also, you know, the, the damper, you don't see it really well here. Um, this is also changed for the world rate um, also offers more travel more performance more adjustability um, i already talked about the seat all the rest in the back is pretty much the same with the with the standard bike and the last thing i really wanted to talk about is the display you can see it here is a tft display um, which is nice looking and you also have the possibility to switch between three modes. This one is the Explorer mode, which is the nicest in my opinion. Then you have a street mode with a round, um, you know, rev meter. And you have, the, you have that um, raid mode where you also can have, uh, you know, distances displayed very big if you're doing a rally or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the display itself is nice. Um, operation of the display goes through this uh, menu button, as we know it from Yamaha. And you see, you can switch through the menus. You can even connect your smartphone if you want to have notifications about incoming calls and stuff. And you can uh, change themes, which is a bit annoying sometimes because the menu operation is a bit strange. I would have to look it up in the manual, but I don't have the manual with me. And this is also great news. You can now switch off the rear ABS only to go off-road if you really want to, yeah, you know, steer the bike with the back. And you can also switch all the off uh, all the ABS off. the The only thing you have to really mind is uh, if you turn off, if you switch off the ignition, this will revert to uh, the original state. So yeah. It's uh, something you need to take into account. The last thing that changed were the flashers, which are now LED standard, which is 2022 is a good thing. And they really look nice, in my opinion. So I wanted to give you a quick overview about the bike and all its differences to the standard version and now Let's just ride it and enjoy it.
Yeah, as I sit on the bike now, I forgot to mention one little thing. The foot packs are actually now a bit wider with the world rate. So it does, this, this is also a difference to the standard version. Uh, it's a bit wider, which makes it more comfortable and gives you more flexibility, of course. Yeah, and then really, you know, I talked about the ergonomy that changed a bit. Uh, sitting down is more comfortable, standing up is pretty much the same. Even though the seat might be a bit wider, you still have a great balance on the packs, which are now bigger, as I mentioned. Yeah, what I really would do is uh, to really also add those uh, grip pads on the side of the bike. Because if you're standing up, you want that extra grip so that your legs don't go anywhere. I think it's really beneficial, so this would be a little investment I would do uh, if I'd buy th this version of the Tenere. So now that we talked about the obvious things and everything, the, the, the differences to the standard version, let's also ride it and really take a look how it feels. I mean, right from the get-go, I felt like the suspension really gives more confidence. It's really stable, you know. I mean, I can only really talk about road riding because uh, that's where I usually use the bike. I mean, I do off-road. I even did some uh, really nice off-road passes, you know. But I mostly ride on the road, which is the way it is anyway in Switzerland, because you don't find that many off-road riding uh, opportunities. Yeah, and on the road it feels, you know, it, it really... I have to say it really transforms the bike with this Kayaba premium suspension that they have on it. I cannot really judge uh, how much comes from that steering damper, but the suspension itself it's just great. It feels more stable around the corners. Uh, you don't sacrifice too much of the comfort because it's a bit stiffer. But it, it really, you know, it feels like a different bike. It feels more like a sport touring bike than like the soft adventure bike that you usually have with the Tenere 700, which is not a bad thing, of course. I mean, I love the bike. It does everything well. But, uh, you know, if I had to, test right both you know simultaneously I would probably fall in love with the standard but afterwards fall in love even more with this one because it's just yeah I mean what should I say it's just so much fun to ride gives so much confidence yeah so something that you also have to know is uh, the seat height is a bit higher with this uh, version of the Tenere 700 it's a uh, two centimeters higher to really uh, make that you know that different seat design fit which is flatter which is also a nice thing in my opinion now we go off-road um, for me with 180 it's really no issue on the road even with those shoes I've been wearing now which are not really um, off-road boots um, if you go off-road, it might be a bit higher, <laughs> a bit more difficult. But totally, I think that this is no issue at all. Ah, the bike handles nice here. I have to be a bit more concentrated because I don't really know the road well here. But it seems easy enough. I mean, the, the bike is so nicely balanced always I mean it's no matter if you have the world rate or the standard version it's just nicely balanced even without electronics and you know this one is same as the standard version doesn't have traction control or, st or all that stuff um, it feels great I mean I'm third gear now full throttle this is nearly asphalt but still uh, I mean traction is amazing with this bike And, you know, I, I just love the engine. Uh, overall, I, I did so many kilometers with this engine now. It's uh, fuel efficient. It's, it feels 
torquey always i mean it's it's a great engine and it also feels nice off-road you just have to be mindful that uh, throttle response sometimes is a bit harsher because it's a twin and you only have uh, one riding mode which is your hand but that's fine i mean it's a great bike to ride it's also you know i can i can now say that i did so many kilometers with it uh, no matter if with a lot of luggage or no luggage at all and it also it always works fine of course if you pack a lot of stuff on it it gets a bit slower but it does the job it always does the job uh, torque is great it's just really good package i mean if you think like uh, 68 newton meters and uh, 73 horsepower are not enough for your riding you should think again because it's it's really an engine that does the job in this platform and yeah it's so enjoyable to ride really so now i've talked about uh, the riding the engine pretty much all the differences that I know maybe there are more oh yeah there is one more uh, there's more wind protection than with the standard model this is a bit higher a bit wider uh, the, the protection in front I was not yet able to test it on the motorway on the road it's nice still gives you a bit of wind on the head but the up upper body is very relaxed um, I personally have a higher shield on my Tenere 700 because I value the extra wind protection especially if conditions are bad, if it's cold, if you do a lot of motorway riding. I mean that might happen sometimes. Uh, this one has a bit more protection than the standard Tenere 700 which is a good thing. And yeah another thing that I did not really talk about this braking so uh, the braking is uh, unchanged and you know some people don't love the brakes of the Tenere 700 but they they were very um, consciously designed so uh, they had to be more or less progressive so that you if you're going off-road you don't have this aggressive brakes uh, well you can feel that a bit uh, on the road uh, you have to squeeze your lever a lot to to get really hard braking but i still i, I, I wouldn't complain because the the bike uh, has to do a lot of different things and i mean this really works well in my opinion even though it could be a bit uh, harder but you know the, the there are brembo brakes so or at least the pump and the calipers I think are Brembo so it's not the hardware it's just uh, the way it's set that is a bit more progressive but I I think it's fine this way because it's really easy to control so now I talked a lot about the bike and you know the differences and everything and now it's time for a little verdict even though i'm far away from being able to give you a proper verdict with a bike i only ridden about uh, 200 kilometers but straight from the get-go this one feels great and i would say if you're looking into buying a middle class adventure bike which is uh, reliable and you know is great fun to ride good has a nice balance and everything uh, this would be a great option honestly i mean you cannot go wrong with both versions the standard and the world rate it's just uh, think about do you need a bigger fuel tank do you uh, actually value the upgraded suspension enough you know if you're going a bit faster if you're doing more hard off-road and stuff this might be really something to consider I mean the standard version is already capable enough to do everything you need to do so um, yeah you don't really need the upgrade but I mean in my opinion it adds a lot of value 
and yeah if you have the opportunity to test ride both of the versions simul simultaneously you should take this opportunity and yeah if not you can take my word for it you cannot go wrong with both of the bikes and in general you cannot go wrong with the adventure bike because uh, these bikes are just so much fun to ride they they are doing everything well you know this one is a, also a great tour in my opinion if you can uh, live with not having a cruise control and everything uh, it's a great touring bike especially with the two uh, fuel tanks with 23 liters you know this uh, adds really more range even I mean the fuel consumption for this bike would be around 4 to 4.5 liters depending on your riding style for me it's uh, usually 4.2 with all the luggage uh, so you would manage with these 23 liters of fuel tank you would manage more than 500 kilometers with one filling which is a nice thing and also the comfort from the long suspension travel and everything you can really use that if you're going for you know less than optimal roads you often encounter in different regions of the world even in switzerland sometimes if you go to certain places you you are really really lucky if you're having a bit more suspension travel and yeah for this i love my tenera 700 um, it's an easy bike uh, it never you know it never broke down in 50,000 kilometers it's the first version of the tenera 700 even uh, first model year I have to say and yeah it's a it's a reliable companion that is a lot of fun does everything well so yeah you have my blessings Tenere 700 is a good bike and the world ride especially is an even better bike I have to say so thanks for listening to all of that talk chit chat and propaganda uh, I hope you still liked this short introduction or this long introduction and thank you very much for listening for watching this was your dragon rider see you around bye